hello and welcome to the Powerful Personal Brand Podcast. I am your host, Claire Bond. And on today's episode, I am going to be talking about personal brand copycats. You heard me right. They always say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but it is not when someone's copying your personal brand. So let's get into it. Say you worked really hard on building your personal brand and your, and, and creating content that is, that is your own. You don't copy anybody and it's hard to create content, brand new content every single time. And you know, someone starts copying you. What? Been there, been there. So unfortunately people see something really successful doing really well and they want some of that. So they're like, hey, personal branding, using myself as an example, marketing, how hard could it be? Mm. Yeah, if you've ever marketed yourself, you know, it's freaking hard and you have to do it consistently. So it's not easy. Yeah, especially in 2020, I had a lot of copycats. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork. You know, I'd already built my personal brand. I already had my business going into 2020. People are freaked out. So they start you know, clamoring and trying to figure out what to do. And what do you see people like that are like, you know, drowning, right? They're going to grab onto somebody else to take you down with them. So people start grabbing, grabbing onto something else. So they'll grab onto this person's content, they'll grab onto that. And they'll, they'll say, here's what I'm doing. And I'll figure it out while I'm doing it. Well, now that we're here in 2023, a lot of those people, I mean, I mean, I feel like 95% of those people are gone. It's because they were faking it and they weren't real. So one of the things to think about when someone is does copy you is that they do not have your knowledge or any of that sort of stuff. So they're just copying it. And eventually the world will, um, you know, give them a harsh reality and they will not succeed. So rest assured with that fact. I totally hate when someone copies me. I had a, a, a situation where somebody um, on LinkedIn, they were in a foreign country, basically gave a connect, like con- did a connection request in LinkedIn. And all of a sudden I'm looking at it. It's like helping X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh my God, that sounds like my social media bio. I went and looked at it. I'm like, that is my social media bio. Word for word, social media bio. What? So I go and look at their website. Their website was a copy of mine. One of my taglines was used and all of these things. Like it was, it was absolutely crazy. And you think about like all the taglines, my my co-founder and I like hashing things out like, oh, what about this word? Let's do this. And I hired copywriters and yeah, so much work. And some guy just literally was like, copy, paste. Here's my website. Claire did it for me. Yeah. Well, anyway, sent him a nice little cease and desist letter. I was like, uh, I have over a hundred thousand followers on social media. So you better take this down or I'm going to actually do a big giant picture of you all over social media and tell people not to do any business with you. Deleted his profile. The website's gone now. So someone like that probably just spooled up something else and now they're being stealth. But truly, I don't even know what would go through this person's mind to have them go like, I'm going to copy Claire's profile and I'm going to connect with her because it makes total sense crazy. So anyway, that's something that happened to me and I've definitely seen it. I mean, I've been doing a lot of photos on Instagram for a really long time and yeah, people probably take in my personas. They could, it's, it's kind of, it sucks. It's a, yeah, you have to build your personal brand and you want to have fun doing it, but sometimes people can kind of suck the fun out of it. (laughs) They really can just be like, well, that sucked. That made it less fun. The world will weed them out. The best still will survive and you will have people, maybe they'll go and talk to them and they'll be like, okay, you're still going to build my personal brand. Hopefully someone that's going to work with them decides to go to many um, personal branding people to figure out which one to go with. And they'll actually realize that the person that is faking all of your stuff and is lying about it actually has no idea what they're talking about. So that is why people do their due diligence. And it is why you need to build your personal brand. It is why you need to be showcasing your expert authority and, um, you know, why you are a leader in the space because yeah, because if someone steals your identity, essentially online, they're not going to be able to, to withstand the scrutiny you are because you are truly who you say you are. Whereas this person is faking it until they're not making it. 
that is that is kind of one of the biggest things. If it gets re- super out of hand, you definitely, I mean, obviously you, you might have to do get legal action. Not a lawyer, so don't know where to go for that. But we do have to build our personal brand. I do am fully committed to the benefits of building your personal brand. But sometimes, yeah, people will copy you as well. They'll, they'll use your likeness. Um, and there's nothing... Unfortunately, especially if you're in a, in a foreign country, there's a lot of times we can't do anything. There was an actor friend of mine named Kevin, and he is a model, um, very good looking. And he did a lot of, um, I, I mean, there were some just pictures and stuff that he'd done, you know, shirtless and things like that. Because as an actor, you know, sometimes if you're a print model and things like that, which I was, you have photos of yourself, you know, in a bikini or something like that, so that someone knows that. If you need, if they're looking for someone to be in a bikini or whatever, um, this is how I look in said bikini. And so for him, it was like, yes, here I am in, you know, my swim trunks. This is what, these are what my abs look like, that kind of thing. And so basically someone took his, essentially the photo from his um, portfolio and used it. In it was in an Asian country. I do not know which one, but one of his friends was in this country and saw (laughs) saw Kevin's face on a picture of like Calvin Klein underwear. It wasn't Calvin Klein, but whatever brand literally they didn't pay for him to do the ad. They just said, okay, this is a cool photo. I will put his face and abs on the image for my underwear and sell them. I don't know that really there was anything he could do, which is a shame. Yeah. The copycats, it completely sucks. But the next thing that you need to think about is sometimes people can be like, oh, I don't want to share my secret sauce or my ideas of personal branding using myself as an example, um, because people might copy me. If I give people the who, what, when, where, and how, how to actually build their personal brand, then they will hire me. The thing that's actually funny, I have a DIY program called Fast Track. And one of our concierge, top of the line concierge program clients actually bought Fast Track first because he wanted to see if I was actually legit, if I actually knew what I was talking about, if the information that I was giving, if he found it useful, and he did, and he became a client. So a lot of times when people are looking at you know, people are doing research. Okay. I need to find a personal branding expert. Uh, who, who do I go to? So you have lots of experts out there. A lot of people that have like these splashy websites and everything is great. There's no photo of a person. There's not like an actual person like you get with Claire Bond group. Um, and there's not a lot of content. There's not, I mean, I have videos and podcasts. There's so much out there that if you wanted to go down that rabbit hole, you could, I've said this over and over, you could figure out how to SEO blogs, how to just all the stuff. I give you a lot of information and I'm happy to do it. But my ideal clients use that information to say, you know what, Claire really speaks my language. I understand what she's saying. It makes sense to me. I like the way that she digests these thoughts, ideas. I think that Claire is the person that I want to go with to build my personal brand. I'm going to set up a consultation and I want to work with Claire and her team. So when you have someone that, you know, when you don't want to share the information, when you don't want to show your expertise, it's going to be really hard to build trust with people. It's just a very hard thing. Um, I remember having a, um, a coaching session with somebody. This was a long time ago. This was like 2020. And the website that this person had and what they did were diametrically opposed. The person had like a very professional business and their website had children on it. Like it looked like a preschool. Her business did help, um, you know, could help young people but the website looked like it was for children. So you have to have, your brand has to fit what it is that you're doing. Not really super related to this, but good for you to know, but uh, go back on track on this. So one of the biggest things that I remember that was a, a problem was that she did not want to share, you know, her tips because she's like, well, why would anyone hire me if I'm giving them all of my tips? And I said, well, 
because someone's going to do their research and they want to go to the absolute best person. And the the way to to build that trust with people to actually get clients is to show that you know what you're talking about. There's a lot of, again, you have these copycats out there and they sit there, they're like doing all the research and then, and they're like, oh yes, this is what I do. But if you give them something that's out of left field, they don't know how to deal with it because yeah, the copycat, they they don't have your left field answer. Oh, you want my answer for the left field? Yeah. You don't have it copycat. Only I do. And that's the thing to remember, right? Um, I've done tons of, you know, podcasts and press and things like that. And I've been asked so many questions, different ways of looking at things. I had um, a, a journalist from a very well-known um, publication come out, come to me, and I didn't get published because she wanted me to answer a question a certain way. And she came at it from 50,000 different directions to get me to answer it the way she wanted me to answer it. And I refused to do it, which is why she didn't use me. But if I had answered it the way she wanted me to answer it, I would basically be saying that personal branding doesn't work. And I'm like, but that's not true. So you can ask me any, every different way, but I know what you're doing because I know what I know inside out. And so that's one of the biggest things to just remember when you have a copycat is that you are the ones that, that knows this stuff. They aren't. They are not going to be able to stand up to scrutiny um, or anything like that. And there's nothing you can do when someone wants to, to steal your tagline or anything like that. When someone steals your likeness, you definitely need to take, take some action. But when someone steals your tagline or your thought or we had was one uh, competitor with our old business, Online Profile Pros, every single time we changed our package offerings, we updated our prices, the other company would lockstep copy it to. Everything, every idea we had, they copied. There's nothing we could do about it. We just had to be better. We had to be better. And that's how we differentiated ourselves because that guy was always going to copy us. So it's like, do you want to go to the real deal or do you want to go to the copycat? Because they're a copycat. They copy everything we do, and that's how you do it. You build market share so that you are the one that everyone knows. You are the one that comes to mind first, not the copycat. So that is how you deal with copycats. It uh, it does suck, but just make sure that you know. <clears throat> You don't let it get you. Don't let it get you down. You go out there and be you. You go out there and differentiate yourself. You go out there and share your expertise because that copycat's not going to be able to do it. If the copycat is creating videos, um, they're going to sound like a robot because they don't know what they're talking about. I've mentioned this when I do my media training with my with my clients. There's something about the camera that you could tell when someone's lying. You can tell when someone's faking. You can tell when someone's just not in it or phoning it in or, or they're so fixated on getting leads or selling their book or whatever. You just know that they're ready to strike like a, (laughs) like a rattlesnake. That's the thing to just, yeah, you have to build that, the trust and, and trust in yourself that what you're doing, if you're fully committed and you fully are in your true authentic self Trust that that will get you where you want to be and the copycat will not. Copycats suck, but the best, you know, the ones that are truly there, truly, you know, invested in um, this market, those are the ones that are actually going to succeed. So keep going. (laughs) Anyway, thank you so much for listening and watching and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. 